CJ here at Thor Parts, and um, recently I did a video on um, adding a two-wheel drive kit to a Hummer H3 transfer case, and uh, it's a pretty good video. I got a lot of positive comments on it and lots of thanks, and hopefully it's helpful to um, people out there wanting to dive in and, and add this uh, option to their Hummer. Um, unfortunately, it was, I did it on a basically brand new transfer case, and it's not really indicative of what you might find. So I have a customer's um, transfer case here on the bench, and this one is a little bit older. This is an 06, and it has 155,000 miles on it. And we're gonna do a tear down and see what's inside that. And uh, this will be a little bit more helpful to most people, I think, if they're gonna tear their, their truck apart. This is gonna be what you're gonna see. It's not gonna be nice and shiny and new. So um, enjoy. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section or feel free to email me through uh, the Thor Parts website, www.thorparts.com. Peace. That took exactly 25 minutes. It's including draining and drive shafts. So there she is. We're going to start tearing this thing apart. Anything that looks worn or questionable, we'll replace. But the fluid looks fantastic. I'm not expecting uh, any drama. We'll check out the chain really well and uh, replace the plastic shift for This it. one is from an 06, and the, the telltale is the fill plug. This is in the wrong place. This plug was relocated up here higher for 2008. So your 2006 and 7, you cannot get enough fluid in here. In fact, they even put this label on here. And then here you can see the original factory squeeze out and how minimal there is. This is the proper amount of uh, sealant that you should be going for. So, and this will not have a snubber inside it either. That was added in, in 08. I didn't also. show this in the uh, last video, but here you can see I'm using the uh, case spreader bolts on these ears. And as you slowly um, tighten these two nuts on this piece of all thread here, you can see it pulls the case apart and breaks the, the factory um, RTV sealant here. And this allows the case halves to come apart parallel so you're not bending or breaking anything because the shifter uh, rod right here is a pretty delicate piece that you can, um, you can break it if you start uh, hammering and prying on this. So I stopped halfway through the uh, separation of the cases so you can see how this works. You definitely want to have some rags and towels standing by. There, there will be some residual um, fluid that comes out because the drain plug doesn't fully drain the case. So when you crack it apart, get ready. There will be a puddle. But here you can see uh, as you're tightening these nuts, spreading the case evenly. In fact, you can already look in there and see the plastic shift fork. All right, <clears throat> we have the case half separated and I can immediately tell that we already have some, pr uh, some problems here. Um, the first problem I noticed is the pickup screen for the fluid pump, which is this piece right here. Um, as you can see, it is completely choked with uh, metallic debris uh, and it's collapsed. So uh, as the pump creates suction on this, uh, once it gets clogged like that, it's trying to suck and suck, and it looks like it's actually sucked the, uh, the, the filter screen off of the fitting here and was probably bypassing that. Um, this leads to starvation um, in the pump circuit, and uh, at that point, you're relying on fluid flinging around inside here instead of actually being pumped, which is not uh, ideal. Um, the other issue immediately that you see, and this is very common, uh, this little thing right here is the worst idea ever. And you can see if you look at the, uh, look at this right here, it's actually coming apart and it is, it is buzz sawed through this ridge. And you see the tip and how skinny that tip is. That tip is supposed to look like that. You see how, you see how thick this piece is here compared to how thin this is here and how it's been riding on the uh, shift collar 
and has just completely worn this fork away. This is totally normal at 155,000 miles, and that's why we replace them with the aluminum version. Uh, the wheel that it rides in, this is the shift collar. Uh, they don't seem to wear quite as bad as the actual fork, so we're gonna leave that. Haven't looked at the chain yet. Now, so the uh, two-wheel drive kit that comes from Transfer Cases Unlimited uh, comes with a couple um, new bushings. And one of those bushings gets installed in this gear. Then this directly drives the chain. Um, if you look down inside here, you can see there is quite a bit of wear on that bearing down in here. And that's why he gives you new ones. So we're gonna swap that out. I think I gotta drive this out and hook it and uh, hammer that out, press this one in, and uh, okay. we should be good to go. Once you drive out the, uh, the old bushing out of this sprocket here, this gear, you can see this is the new one, and you can see the amount of wear that was on this old one. So it, uh, you just find the appropriate socket that fits the shoulder and then uh, beat it out of there. And then we're going to tap a new one in with some aluminum um, and press it in uh, possibly see which method works best. I might put this in the oven and put this in the freezer and then, uh, I don't know, about 400 degrees for 20 minutes, something like that to get it good and hot and see if uh, sometimes they'll just drop in. All right. Here's what the first one done. I took photos before so I knew how deep to uh, install the new bushing into this um, gear. So make sure you do that. I don't know how critical that is, but uh, I try to get it uh, close to where the other one took was. quite a bit of fussing, but I eventually got this new uh, bushing installed into the output shaft. Had to cut the old one out here long ways and collapse it and pull it out. And then the new one's a pretty tight fit going in. I measured it before I knocked this one out, so I put it into the same depth um, as the old one. So now we're fresh on this one. We're gonna reinstall this into the tail shaft and then get this half cleaned up and then we're gonna go work on the After other half. much cleaning and scraping, um, I realized that it was hopeless trying to save the screen. I thought I could just buy the screen for a couple bucks and replace it. Um, this fitting does come apart and you know you could just replace the screen but instead I had to buy the entire assembly here from GM here's the part number and you're gonna want to sit down when you see the price of this little thing this is a five or six dollar part and this was fifty dollars and there's the part number for the screen you're gonna need that if you've got uh, any kind of debris in your transfer case. Sometimes you can clean these and get them to work, but uh, in this case, it was so badly uh, choked and damaged, I had to replace it. Some other uh, part numbers. This is uh, one of the bearings for the main shaft. That is 191-68732 and 68733. These are the bearings that go inside um, these pulleys down in here. And um, the other one is right in there on the output shaft. Um, and those come with the kit from uh, Transfer Cases Unlimited. Uh, in addition, here's the Fell Pro gasket, 72769. This goes between the transmission and the transfer case. And I actually don't think that there's any fluid uh, normally in that area. I get the feeling this might be more for uh, spacing the, the correct, you know, in play between the, the two shafts. Um, because there's no reason to really have a gasket in there. I'm not sure why this gasket's there. It doesn't contain any fluid, not normally. Um, unless your rear transmission seal fails, some might come out through here. But um, when everything's healthy, this gasket seems to serve no purpose other than to, you know, offset the transfer case an additional, oh, I'd say, you know, 20 thousandths or so. And of course the chain, here's the chain. These are very common. Uh, this one came from Borg Warner. This is uh, around 120 bucks, easy to find. And then lastly is the metal shift fork. 
and you can get these from GM. I don't know the exact part number. There's something on here that says 4493-09608. I'm not sure if that's a part number, but um, you can also get these. I believe Dorman makes a reproduction of this also. Very common part to replace the plastic junk right there. On the case bolts, <clears throat> they use a Torx bit and these are actually special. These are plastic coated bolts um, and they are self tapping. So when you put them in here, you want to do your initial, you know, getting the, the bolt started by hand and be, don't be running these in full strength with an impact, you know, bring them down on here. And then obviously you're going to want to tighten them alternating um, to, to bring the case together evenly. Um, this plastic coating is to prevent um, the uh, reaction between the magnesium and the steel. They're dissimilar metals and that creates a, a, a situation where corrosion can form in these holes. So the plastic coated bolts are kind of special. Um, you might want to let some of the RTV get on the threads intentionally and that'll also help insulate it and keep corrosion from happening. Uh, torque rating on these is officially 18 um, foot-pounds, so don't go crazy with these. It's, there's a bunch of them around here, and it doesn't take much to hold the thing together. Okay, we have the case halves bolted back together, torque to spec. Here you can see the proper amount of squeeze-out that uh, you're looking for. Uh, again, go sparingly when you put this together. These case halves are... Uh, are machined flat on the mating surfaces so it's not like this stuff from uh, the 60s and 70s um, you know when these go together it's a pretty tight tolerance and it doesn't take much to seal them um, while the T case is on the bench I usually take and uh, clean up this gasket surface with the razor blade and a wire brush and get it ready to accept the encoder motor it's easier to do it here than it is under the truck um, I usually install them with the little arrow on the shaft pointing straight out the side. And that's your standard, you know, four wheel drive variable, or in this case, two wheel drive mode. Um, I like to measure out the uh, total capacity is 1.5 liters. I like to measure that out ahead of time and actually fill the case before I put it in the truck. Um, it's just easier because once you get it up in there, it's it's very difficult to get fluid in through this hole here. Um, so I prefer to fill them ahead of time. The only thing is when you do that, you got to be careful not to tip the transmission too far or you're going to end up uh, spilling a bunch out of here all over yourself, uh, getting it back in the truck.